Coming up now is the STEM graduates career development sharing. We are honored to have invited some local and overseas STEM graduates to share with us their career development. The two conveners of this session are both graduates of Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education of the Vocational Training Council. They are Joanna and Damon. Okay. We would like to invite the following STEM graduates to join the discussion. Timothy, graduate of Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education. Jody, graduate of Sheffield Harlem University, United Kingdom. Rika, graduate of Turku University of Applied Sciences, Finland. Imogen, graduate of University of Lincoln, United Kingdom. Please put your hands together for Joanna, Damon, and the panelists. So, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, uh, distinguished guests, uh, parents and students, and everyone else joining us on webinar today. And I'm Damon Wong. I'm the IT graduate of Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education. I'm Joanna. I'm also an engineering a gra uh, graduate from the Hong Kong Institute of Vocational Education. A very warm welcome to you all for joining us in the last session of today, uh, the sharing of the STEM graduates in their career development. So today, uh, despite of all the difficulties and obstacles we have been uh, facing globally, thank you very much for joining us today. So today we have six STEM graduates, three from the Hong Kong, who are all graduates from the uh, VTC, and three graduates overseas, two from the UK and one from Finland. We all have very different uh, fields in the STEM. We have uh, engineering in marine time, aerospace and engineering in industries. We have information and communication technology, as well as biotechnology. And we are all engaged in very different roles. We have engine services and management, we have quality assurance, we have technical support and supporting and development, as well as scientific research. So now let's ask all our graduates to introduce themselves. First, I'll start with myself. I'm Joanna Kwok. I am born and brought up in Hong Kong. And after my HKCE open examination, I have chosen higher diploma in mechanical engineering from the IFE, from VTC. So after graduation from the higher diploma, I've chosen to join a shipping company, company Anglo Eastern, uh, to be an engine cadet and sail on cargo ships. So now I'm currently a chief engineer, and I'm the first female in Hong Kong who have uh, qualified as a chief engineer. So now let's move on to the next graduate, our youngest graduate here today, Mr. Damon. So Mr. Damon, please. Thanks, Joanna. Hi everyone, I'm Damon Wong. I born and raised in Hong Kong. I'm a graduate from Ivy with a high diploma in cloud and data center administration. Then I obtained a bachelor's degree in information technologies at the University of the West of England in 2017. Currently, I'm a senior programmer working in a software house located in Cyberport, Hong Kong. So thank you, Damon. So maybe now we can move, move on to our next graduate. So maybe Timothy, please. Hi, everyone. My name is Timothy. I was born in Hong Kong, and I did my uh, studies in Hong Kong mainly. But after my AL public exam, I did my higher diploma in Ivy and graduated in 2008. With the support um, uh, of uh, Anista Harvey Foundation Scholarship, I went to UK for my bachelor and master degree. And last, I did my PhD at Faculty of Medicine at University of Hong Kong. So currently, I'm working at the National Cancer Center Singapore. Uh, I have been here for six years, and uh, I'm quite delighted to have certain achievements. For example, recently, I was uh, recognized as the Young Investigator Internationally for the Cancer Immunotherapy Research. And I also work as a research manager to oversee a 20 billion US dollar research program in Singapore. 
So, so maybe now we can have Ms. Reka, please. Thank you, Joanna. Hi, everyone. My name is Reka Sihonen. I'm from Finland. I did a Bachelor of Engineering degree and specialized in information technology at the Turku University of Applied Sciences. I graduated in 2012, so I already have some years of work history behind me. But I currently work as a support engineer for Cisco Systems. And one interesting fact about me is that I was selected as the first female Cisco designated VIP for the Cisco Learning Network back in 2014. Lastly, we have our final graduates. Jody, who is one of two the representatives from the UK. Jody, please. Hi, good afternoon, everybody. It's really nice to join you today. Uh, my name is Jodie Howlett. I'm from the UK, uh, and I studied my degree in mechanical engineering at Sheffield Hallam University in the UK. I graduated last year, and then I went straight on to the Space Studies program at the International Space University in France uh, for a nine-week course. Um, and now I'm, I'm in my graduate scheme and I'm working in Germany uh, at the European Space Agency uh, in their mission control center. Uh, and something I'm particularly proud of is that in 2017, I was listed in the UK's top 50 women in engineering. Now let's have our last graduate, Ms. Imogen, who also come from UK. Ms. Imogen, please. Yeah, thanks, Dalen. So after graduating from the University of Lincoln, um, I started a graduate scheme with Siemens. I've worked in several roles since. Uh, most recently, um, I'm in a division whereby I'm a regional product development manager. I work from home, but I spend a lot of time traveling between Manchester and London. One of the things I'm most proud of is a, a patent I received for a design piece of work I did at university in collaboration with industry. So thank you, Imogen. So as you have all here today, every one of us have a very different job and in different industry. Uh, even we have three mechanical engineers in the same field, but we are all engaged in different roles and different fields. One working at sea, one working on land, and someone working something related to space. So <laughs> isn't it interesting what STEM can make us uh, lead to very different life and very different lifestyles? Uh, so I guess everyone will have a very particular or impressive things in why you pursue STEM. So maybe perhaps, Damon, you can start first. Thanks, Joanna. During my bachelor's studies in my universities, <coughs> I, joined, I joined the ISSF 2017 as a project presenter. I work on smart bus shelter to collect the data on the buses. Through the ISSF, I got my, my first job opportunity in the Hong Kong largest bus company. And how is that I'm here? I start my career, I start my career as a pro programmer. I write code to build software to speed up the process with automation. Also, I build various IT applications, such as the passenger counter that you can see on the bus double deck buses. Thanks to the technologies, I can work remotely from home and don't need to go back to the office all the time. As we know, Rika also works remotely from in other countries. Can you share your life of stamps, Rika? Uh, yes, thank you, Damon. Um, I have a very unique work situation. I work from home, and my team is scattered around the world, Finland, Norway, Australia, although the team is mainly focused in the United States. Cisco headquarters is in San Jose, California, where most of our team is based. And I currently work for the TIS team, which stands for Technical Implementation and Support. And our team is responsible for operating a data center which hosts an e-learning platform that our customers use to train their personnel. So in simple terms, my role is tech support. So if customers experience any problems with the e-learning tools, we fix it. So it's basically helped us work. 
And the work itself is very independent, but of course, sometimes I need to involve my team members to help me solve tickets. And there's a little travel involved other than annual team meeting or attending a conference. And I mainly communicate with my team members online. And the global COVID situation has not affected my job because I work from home at all times. Thanks a lot, Imogen. In contrast to Imogen always working from home, my job is always working out of home because <laughs> most of the time of the year I'm out of home. I will sign a contract and join a ship for six to eight months and I'm working on a ship. This is uh, on the uh, screen you can see a tanker and this is not the largest ship I've sailed on. The largest ship I've sailed on have a length of around 3.5 uh, length of a standard football ground or maybe if you have, if some female are not very interested in football, you can imagine uh, fi around five times the length of a Boeing 747. So yeah, you can imagine there's a lot of physical activities you are doing every day. And uh, the voyage, uh, the contract is six to eight months, but the voyage really depends on how, what is the cargo. Maybe for containers, it is very fixed route. Every month you're coming back to the same port. But maybe for some other ship type, even two to three months, one voyage is normal for us. And for responsibility, at most of the time, we are just uh, maintaining the ship safely and smoothly, carrying the cargo from one port to the other port without stopping in the middle of nowhere or having some kind of titanic kind of situations. <laughs> so uh, there are a lot of hands-on work uh, in the beginning of the years. Maybe I will get myself rather dirty and, but afterwards, later on in the year, there are a lot of uh, controlling, planning kind. So most of the time, I'll be sitting in the control room, which you can see in the photo on the screen on the left corner. So that is a good place, the best place to be on the, in the engine room, because that's the only place with the AC. And uh, you can see the other side outside the control room, which is the engine room, actual engine room. It's like 45 plus degrees. So it's a very good uh, sauna room, maybe you can say. So moving on to the li other lives on board. Uh, there are good things or bad things. You can see, OK, you're always out of home. But at the same time, uh, I'm traveling to very different or remote places with very good sceneries, seeing iceberg, getting inside the Arctic Circle. And I'm travel I'm, my colleagues are mostly all around different nationalities. So I get to know the culture, eating curry, because most of my colleagues are Indians. <laughs> and uh, I get a very decent sized cabin, which is something very in, com very in common in Hong Kong. So a lot of my Hong Kong friends are very jealous of me. <laughs> and at the same time, I also, we also have a very different lifestyle. As internet is so popular and common nowadays, but on ship is not like that. So my colleagues and even myself, when we get to a port, will be like the photo on the left corner. Everyone will be on the computer trying to get some Wi-Fi signal to uh, download some movies or getting in touch with the friends and families. So I think that is quite interesting as well. Um, apart from all the jobs we are having, my job also involved in some gas turbine, which was in the last um, uh, slide. So I know uh, one of my, our graduates, Imogen, also involved in some energy industry regarding turbines. Maybe Imogen, you can share your uh, experience with us. Imogen, please. Yeah, sure. So I work for Siemens, and my background is gas turbines. Um, you can see that in the bottom right of the screen. They're essentially big aeroplane engines, but used for mechanical drive or power generation. So an example could be to power a factory or a backup generator in a hospital. So the engine you see on screen would produce about 15 megawatts of electricity. This could produce enough power for about 10,000 homes. The graduate scheme I undertook as part of my work at Siemens gave me exposure to placements in design, manufacture, testing, and also into service, so looking after the engines in the field. And this is all done from a single UK site, which is quite unique. Um, so now I work in a team where we support customers with their energy trilemma. So we make their power cheaper, uh, more stable and secure, but also more sustainable. 
So we work with a range of products. So gas engines is one of them. You can see one of those on the screen. That's a two megawatt gas engine from Siemens. And to put that into context, it maybe would be enough energy to make about 15,000 cups of coffee. So um, this, along with some sustainable technologies like solar and wind turbines, we use all of these different technologies um, in, in projects. And innovation is at the heart of what we do with our kind of solutions-driven projects. So if we move on to the next slide, I can tell you a little bit about what life is like as um, an engineer in my role. So a lot of my classmates at university and colleagues now are, are mostly men. I think you can see that from the photo in the next slide. Because of that, I found that I actually have a love for football um, and enjoy playing with my colleagues after work. So you can see a photo there. I've been really lucky to work in some brilliant teams um, who have been incredibly supportive. And because I enjoy my role and my job so much, it's important to promote what a brilliant career engineering is, particularly to girls, because not many of them are taking up the profession. So again, you can see some photos of some of the outreach work that I've done um, to encourage more girls into the profession. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Imogen. Uh, speaking of uh, women in STEM, we know that Jodi also has recognized it as the top uh, 50 women in uh, engineering. Uh, may we know more from you about your personal journey of STEM and your achievement, Jodi? Yeah, sure. Just to talk a bit about my background then. Um, so I attended a university technical college from the age of 14, um, which was uh, the first of its kind in the UK. And I got to learn lots of vocational skills. And I was studying engineering uh, alongside my other uh, like English, math, science kind of subjects. Um, and whilst I was there, um, I volunteered after school at a local airfield helping to restore old aeroplanes. So you can see that in the top right there. That's what first sparked my interest in the aerospace sector. Um, and then moving forward onto university, uh, whilst I was there, I also got a taste for other industries as well that I could work in as an engineer. So I, I completed an internship with Siemens, uh, helping to improve the production of MRI scanners. Uh, I also went to South Africa um, and worked for a biomedical engineering firm there, um, working on things like oxygen equipment for hospitals. Um, and I, I also completed a, a one-year placement with Rolls-Royce in the UK. Uh, you can see that on the photo on the left. And uh, this was design work on future jet engines for aeroplanes. Um, so lots of exciting kind of roles I've experienced uh, in STEM. Um, and now today I work for ESA, the European Space Agency, uh, at Mission Control. So the bottom left photo is our Mission Control room. Um, and my job is in the quality department. Uh, so quality is really important uh, for this kind of work. Uh, because if we get a problem in space uh, on one of our spacecraft, we need to look at the data we're receiving and we need to try and figure out a solution to that problem. Um, for example, it could be optimizing the way that solar panels are orientated so we get as much power as we need for the spacecraft. Um, and if we would just look at the next slide, please. And again, in the top left, uh, this, this is at work. This is from a launch uh, a couple of months ago. So we launch our rockets from South America um, and we control from Germany. And this was an event for our solar orbiter mission, which is currently on the way to the sun. Uh, and there was lots of excitement. People were in work at 3 a.m. to come and see the event and to celebrate. Um, so it's, it's been a fantastic opportunity to work in a very international environment as well, with people from over 20 different countries. Um, so it's given me lots of exposure to different areas. Uh, and then outside of work, I, I really like to promote STEM, uh, particularly to the younger generation. You can see a couple of photos there as well, um, some of the outreach events that I've been involved in, which has been really rewarding. Yeah, that's uh, interesting. So uh, I always have the impression that uh, engineering work or job is always like uh, holding different tools and equipment to go around and fix things. 
and and uh, Nana from Jody, I know that uh, she also uh, working in Germany away from home. So uh, now maybe I, I would like to share my own experience. Uh, so now I'm working uh, as a scientist in Singapore. Uh, as I mentioned earlier that I, I've been in Singapore for six years. So now my um, daily work is like to perform different experiments uh, in a specific area for cancer treatment. So uh, we usually use, um, for example, cancer cell line, uh, number three mice, and do a lot of uh, statistic and bioinformatic analysis. And also the key idea is to understand the cancer and hopefully to develop a new cancer treatment. So you can see from the uh, PowerPoint slides that uh, those are my bosses. So I report to the uh, uh, deputy director directly, so uh, who is uh, the Chinese person in the photo. So uh, we work very closely with clinician to uh, answer the clinical situation, or, or for example, in my situation is to answer how we can develop new cancer treatment uh, by doing different experiment. And during the time, I, I, I also have uh, experience to work with different local and overseas pharma biotech. Uh, or new startup companies. So even uh, now so we are talking about a new startup in Singapore as well. So if you go to the next PowerPoint slides, I would like to share some of my uh, exciting uh, eye-opening experience that uh, as I uh, mentioned earlier on as well, uh, I was recognized as an international young investigator. So it's our very first uh, recognition uh, by an international society. Even uh, I, I was the... I'm, I'm the first in Southeast Asia to um, obtain this award. And um, uh, being a scientist uh, in Singapore or in general in this field, uh, we have a lot of opportunities to go overseas uh, to work with different uh, people and uh, clinician scientists uh, and others. So uh, for example, in the middle is our strong Singapore team that we put together with different famous uh, clinician scientists. Uh, so for this uh, team, uh, as uh, myself, as one of the key drivers, we obtained the 20 million US dollar from the Singapore government to work on cancer immunotherapy. So uh, and another part of my uh, job uh, that I feel the most exciting is that after uh, we discover something new, as you can see from the corner of the uh, PowerPoint slide, uh, the local newspaper will cover our story in the press. And also, um, uh, I, I really glad that uh, once I have the experience to be the front page of South China Morning Post uh, uh, to report our new discovery. And lastly, uh, I feel very excited to uh, work with uh, a patient and hopefully bring more hope to them by uh, through what we do. And I like enjoy. I, I really enjoy uh, interacting with those patients as well. Thank you very much, Timothy, and all our graduates for their sharing. Now maybe let us, uh, our graduates, all take their tablet up and uh, write down the factors which are affecting the students in pursuing STEM. One favorable factor and one disadvantage fa factor. Maybe you can think about what are the factors you think you have earned or you like in your, in your field of, in STEM and one challenging factor or something you don't like when you are in your factor. Once you're ready, you can hold up your tablet and show us to all our audience uh, here with us today and uh, on the webinar. Uh, Imogen, maybe need to hold your tablet a bit up, please. Yes, that's cool. So now I can see all the answers, but Timothy answer is a bit Vague. Maybe Timothy can share with us what is your answer first. Timothy, please. Uh, yeah, sure. I apologize for the poor resolution. So uh, for the first part, the uh, favorable factors, I think to myself, I think it's, uh, it's just in general not cool and not professional. For example, uh, uh, always uh, since young, I always have the impression that working in STEM or engineering, being an engineer or scientist, they always have a nice uh, like that core and unique uh, uniform and particularly they can use a lot of latest or uh, new technology or equipment that look very nice. So I, I would say that for the favorable factors uh, to myself, it's just look cool and uh, professional. And But for the disadvantage factors, I think uh, just, uh, I think that it's just a, a non-working hour in general. Thanks a lot, Timothy. So I see uh, Damon here also writes something about working hours. Maybe Damon can slightly share with us as well. Uh, as I say, I'm a programmer. I need to work after dinner. 
or I need to work very early. For example, I need to work uh, at 7 a.m. So I have no fixed hour to work. So it's really uh, not really cool for me. So yeah. It's, it's kind of surprising that both the guys graduates are complaining about working hours. So anyway, we'll move on to my female graduates. Uh, maybe Reka can uh, share a bit with us what you have written. Reka, um, yeah, please. So I, um, yeah, I wrote down innovation for the advantage, advantageous aspect. And that's because STEM helps to transform new ideas into the best inventions. For example, if you think of the evolution of the mobile phone, it's pretty incredible. Like in a relatively short time, the mobile phone has developed from a bulky, expensive device with limited functions to an extremely capable everyday item. So it's amazing to be a part of a field that turns sometimes wild ideas into cool inventions. And then for the disadvantage, I wrote down fast paced and it's because with innovation comes rapid change, and sometimes it's hard to keep up with the fast-paced transformations of the STEM field, and I would consider this a disadvantage. Thank you, Rika. Uh, I see uh, Imogen also have a similar disadvantage factor. Maybe Imogen, you can uh, talk about your factors for us? Imogen, please. Yeah, very briefly, I think, Variety is, is twofold. So you've seen the breadth of our roles um, in the, the opportunities that engineers have. Also, I think on a practical level that um, in terms of variety, every day is different. So you can go into work and do something completely different Monday to Friday. In terms of um, negatives, I've written rapid change. Um, so similar to Rika, I think it, it can be a positive too, um, because if you believe in what you're doing, then it's exciting to kind of stay abreast with different technological kind of advancements, but equally it can be exhausting. Thanks a lot, Imogen. Last but not the least, we have Jody. Jody, can you share with us how, why does your work never get bored? Sure, um, well, I think working in STEM in general, uh, you're not really going to get bored. If you think about the chairs you're sitting on at the moment, the clothes you're wearing, uh, even making this webcast possible. All of these things that uh, we take for granted, a lot of science, technology, engineering and maths has gone into them. Um, and STEM is everywhere. And there are so many ways that we can get involved in it in so many different interesting areas. Um, but on the flip side, it can be challenging because we have big problems to solve. Um, technology is getting more and more sophisticated. Um, so sometimes it can get frustrating when you've been working on a problem and you can't seem to be getting anywhere with it. Um, but these challenges also bring the greatest rewards. Um, you know, we, we wouldn't have been able to put people on the moon um, if we didn't rise up to the challenges that were faced. Um, so it, it's, it's also a great opportunity. To... Thanks a lot, Jody. Um, for myself, I think uh, the advantage or favorable factor for my job is, uh, is an eye-opening experience because it's so rare in Hong Kong. But the disadvantage factor is because since the engineering was so hard and engineering work, sometimes, yeah, it can be quite dirty as well. It's dirty and tiring. But at the same time, I think uh, all, of, all of the other uh, graduates' answer is also a, pretty much my, my answer is never get bored because you are traveling around the world and at the same time there's a lot of variety. Yes, even there's fast pace, maybe from one port to another, it's just two hours and we are, have so much of preparation, but still you, you feel very challenged and once it, you feel, feel very satisfied after all the challenge is done. So I think still out of the disadvantage factors, there are good factors as well. So now, now, after talking about the factors which um, of, uh, have affected uh, students in pursuing STEM, let's move on to how exactly are graduates and start in STEM. Uh, for me, uh, being born and brought up in Hong Kong, I think the Hong Kong education system is rather uh, examination-oriented. 
not until the students have finished their open exam, then only we have a chance to actually think or choose or know something about vocational or what other career uh, prospect in the future. For myself, after my open exam, I've chosen mechanical engineering because I think me uh, en mechanical engineering is the basic of pretty much a lot of en other engineering subjects. And I know in uh, mechanical engineering, I get a lot of job opportunities. So, and, uh, so, and I have chosen marine or ship industry, marine time industry, because I know it is a once in a lifetime experience and there are not many people in Hong Kong who are in this, into this field. So even if I like it or I don't like it, it's just a six month contract, but I have a lot to gain and a lot to see. So maybe uh, in Hong Kong, the situation is like that. Maybe our audience or students will be interested to know what is the situation about our overseas graduates. Maybe Imogen can share a bit of her reason or how her decision in pursuing STEM. Imogen, please. Uh, sure, so I have to be honest, it's not a career that I ever considered. Um, I've always enjoyed maths and science and I guess problem solving in a, a broader sense. It wasn't until my A-levels before university, whereby a, a maths teacher encouraged me to consider engineering. I definitely had a misconception that I was gonna be a, a car mechanic if I were to choose an engineering kind of job. So yes, yeah, she used to be an engineer and just kind of expanded my appreciation of the profession. And the, the more I looked from that point onwards, the more I realized that the scale of opportunities and support. So I um, managed to get a scholarship when I studied at university and there was loads of opportunities for different summer placements while I studied. And, and that's how I got into the engineering field. Thank you, Imogen. So we ha uh, how about Reka? How you uh, decided how you joined uh, something in STEM? Uh, yes, thank you, Joanna. Um, I have always had an interest in technology, but choosing a career in STEM was essentially a sum of two factors. So first, I wanted to pursue something I was passionate about. And second, I wanted to work in an industry with great future career prospects. And IT stood out from the few options that I considered. However, specializing in networking was not always a clear choice. Uh, I was actually introduced to networking at the university and I slowly became confident that I could create an amazing career in this field. And as I continued to develop my skills and gain exposure in the field, I'm sure that this will be a rewarding lifelong career. Thank you for the question. Thanks a lot, Rika. Last, we have Jody, also coming from the UK. So is your experience similar to Imogen? Uh, yes, I guess kind of um, in, in my early kind of school life, um, I remember I really enjoyed maths and science, but also being creative as well. Um, and the, the first kind of idea I had uh, for a career was to become a doctor. Um, but then later I developed uh, more of an interest in product design. And so I really wasn't sure exactly what I wanted to do at a young age. Um, but then at, at the age of 14, when, when I kind of understood a bit more about what engineering was, um, and it's basically applying the subjects I really like to solving real world problems. Um, I then chose to go and study engineering at the University Technical College that I, I spoke about earlier. Um, and whilst I was here, uh, I got to work on projects um, to complete our coursework uh, with lots of engineering firms. So I worked with companies like Rolls-Royce, Toyota, Bosch, um, and many others. And, and this gave me some really eye-opening experience into what real engineering firms do um, and what I could get involved in as a potential career. Um, and then I went on to university and it wasn't until I was at university until I even considered space as a career. Um, and it, it was just two years ago, I, I went to a space conference uh, because I, I didn't know anything about space and I just wanted to gain some more understanding. I thought it was an interesting area. Um, and it completely 
open my eyes to many new opportunities that I didn't know existed. Um, so from there, I, I knew that I wanted to move into a space career. Um, but just to conclude, uh, I, I really want to get across the point that you can work in so many different industries and there are so many opportunities um, within engineering and STEM in general. Yeah, I do agree with you, Jody. Um, uh, working in the STEM, um, there is always has a lot of uh, wide range of different opportunities. And I always enjoy uh, listening to all these uh, sharing, uh, uh, especially from overseas. Uh, so uh, going back, uh, coming back to Hong Kong situation, uh, do you know, uh, 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 Joanna, may I ask about uh, what is the opportunities and prospects uh, uh, in Hong Kong, particularly, for example, in jet engineering? What do you think? Uh, despite uh, Hong Kong being uh, recognized or described always as an economical hub, I think there are still a lot of engineering uh, jobs opportunities. We need engineering, engineers in building services, in environmental science, engineering in infrastructure, in uh, communication technology. There are all sorts of uh, engineers required in Hong Kong. And uh, the job process uh, prospect of engineers also is quite nice in Hong Kong because mostly or generally as an engineering field, the prospect is always hands-on. So someone will be guiding you, teaching you, you are earning, uh, gaining your experience when you are junior. Then slowly after you gain your experiences, you will be going up to the management level. You start doing some more of a planning job, management job, and uh, personnel management as well. Mm, it seems there is some uh, career advancement and uh, the uh, job scope also changed a bit from the hands-on uh, to more management uh, role. Then, uh, Damon, is that the same uh, situation for IT industry in Hong Kong? Uh, thanks, team. In view of recent COVID situations, there's a global demand for technology, such as the cloud drive to share the information and the online meeting, like our webinar today. For sure, IT jobs will be very popular. With the new IT trend in AI, a lot of business are required in engineer, software, and IoT system to have the knowledge in AI and big data. How about you, Timothy? Yeah, I think uh, for my industry in Hong Kong, is uh, quite straightforward. Uh, most of the um, uh, position would depend on the educational background. So for example, um, if you are a uh, high diploma or a bachelor or master graduate, you, can, you could be the uh, laboratory technician, uh, kino trial coordinator, uh, even you can involve the in testing lab, uh, do the uh, analytical sciences, uh, being the safety officer. And even if you are interested, you can be the forensic scientist uh, to be like a CSI or something. Uh, but if you have a PhD uh, degree, then you will become a uh, postdoctorate researcher. Uh, scientists and you can lead the field uh, for certain projects, for example, being a project manager uh, to oversee some medical uh, or scientific projects. So, um, and also, uh, uh, particularly if you have PhD, then it you will also have uh, uh, some opportunities overseas. Uh, it also, like learning from my own experience, uh, I, I do have some uh, global exposure as well through the uh, job that I'm doing now. So, um, uh, speaking of which, uh, Jody, uh, may, may I uh, hear from you, uh, hear from your view on the global as aspect of the engineering? Sure, yeah. Um, in, in my opinion, engineering and STEM are hugely international. Um, we need lots of international collaboration. Uh, for example, uh, in space, um, there's over 20 different member states that make up the European Space Agency and we need everybody to play their part and to work as a team. Um, and, and working in engineering as well, you can, you can go and experience many different environments. Um, you can work all over the world, uh, but you can also work in different settings in, in your day-to-day -day tasks. So, for example, you could be developing medicines in a lab. You could be designing airplanes in an office. Uh, you could be assembling parts to build robots in, in a workshop. We could be carrying out maintenance on a ship. Um, there's so many examples of different places you can go and work. And, and for me, uh, this is one of the, the main things that keeps it really interesting. Yeah, thanks, uh, Jody. And also, learning from um, 
uh, similar to uh, uh, Damon, I think uh, nowadays we talk about AI, big data, and even uh, in my field uh, for our medical researchers, uh, we are also start to use uh, quantum computationing uh, for the research, and we even need to integrate a lot of data and different platform technology together. So I, I will see that it become a, a multidisciplinary um, uh, area, um, and so and. All of us would agree that industry are fast changing uh, uh, with technology, and we need to learn a lot of different uh, knowledge uh, from different disciplines as well. So I think we, we have to keep uh, constantly update our knowledge and skill uh, for the future of innovation. So um, uh, Joanna, uh, may I ask uh, your opinions at the end? Uh, I think uh, in my field, uh, the marine time field has uh, started changing from the very pure or traditional mechanical to automation and electronics. Uh, last few ships I've already sailed on uh, electronic controlled uh, engine, uh, powered engine ships. And uh, there are also unmanned ships like the drones of flights you have. And all those technology also start developing. Thanks, Tim. Yeah. So I think uh, the industry is very fast changing with all the technologies. Uh, from our graduates sharing. So now, uh, about talk about talking about future. So may we may our graduates now also again uh, take up their tablet and write one or two skills or qualities which they think is required uh, for the future development in STEM. Uh, maybe you can just think of what your what your uh, what your field is requiring, what people they are looking for, etc. Once you're ready, you can hold up your tablet and show it to our audience. You can, or maybe you can write something you are lack of <laughs> as well, if you can't think of anything. So already I've seen Damon writing communication and logical thinking, Jody writing complex problem solving and communication as well. Timothy writing innovation and willingness to learn. Uh, Reka writing decisiveness and determination. Last but not the least, we have Imogen writing flexibility and communication. So Timothy, may, may you uh, elaborate a bit more on your answers? Timothy, yeah. please. Uh, I yeah, I think to me, uh, for the innovation part, I think uh, because uh, uh, as we discussed just now, uh, the world is really fast changing, uh, and even in the STEM industry. So we need to stay innovative, uh, be innovative uh, in the future, as uh, we all agree that it will be the AI robotic uh, era. So we need to be innovative to uh, develop new technology and new things to catch up with the flow of the future. But uh, for the se second point, I, I would like to comment on the willingness to learn. Uh, as also we just discussed that um, there are a lot of knowledge that we need to know. Uh, now that so they talk about how well we can integrate all the different knowledge together, uh, because uh, we, we just call it the terms uh, um, multidisciplinary. So uh, I think it, willingness to learn is important. Moving out from our own expert area, but to learn others, for example, from my background, uh, moving forward from Moving from uh, about medical research to IT, even I need to know uh, data management and um, uh, bioinformatic analysis with different uh, programs like Python or R, etc. So I think willingness to learn is important, and particularly to Hong Kong students, I think we all need to strengthen our English, uh, also to myself as well, because uh, it will help us to work uh, internationally and go far in our industry in general. Thanks, Timothy. Maybe we can have Reka to explain, elaborate about her uh, skills she has chosen as well. Reka? Uh, yes, so I wrote down decisiveness and determination. Uh, so first, you need to have the ability to make decisions quickly and effectively. I could also translate this to us having the ability to prioritize, uh, being able to differentiate what is important and what is not, uh, especially in time-critical situations. Reacting fast and deterministically is of high importance. And as for determination, you need to be able to follow through with a project or a support case, whatever it may be, and then produce a planned result, uh, planned result or a desired outcome. 
Thanks a lot, Rekha. Um, personally, my, my two uh, skills I've written is uh, to be adaptive and to be open. It's a bit similar to what uh, Timothy and uh, Imogen or even Jody have written. You need to be adaptive and flexible so you can uh, uh, adapt to the very fast changing in, uh, technology and all the changes which is happening even not on a daily basis, but on a second basis. And you need to be open, to be open to learn, like what Timothy has said, and to be open uh, when there is a problem, to be open to listen to suggestions, and to be open to even your younger ranks, people who are telling you the answers or solutions which can help you in problem solving. And I have seen a lot of our graduates writing communication, even Damon as well. So Damon, maybe you can talk about something about communication for us. Uh, I think that nowadays lots of projects are interdisciplinary. People from different knowledge domains, they, they will communicate and innovate to solve the problem together. Just like us, we are sharing our ideas together. So, come to, have, come to the next part. Do you have any message to pass to to pass to our next generation? Start from Imogen, perhaps. Sure. Um, I think it's really simple for me, and maybe it's quite close to my heart. So it's, sustainability is at the heart of what I do in my current role, and I want it to be moving forwards. I think it's really essential for our generation and, and younger generations <laughs> to come. So if you want a rewarding and interesting career that's absolutely driven by innovation, then I think engineering should be forward. Thanks. Thanks, Imogen. So, Rika, do you have any <coughs> message for our young students? Um, yes, thank you, Damon. Uh, I would certainly agree with Imogen, and I would promote STEM careers by stating that due to the constant and cr increasing need for technologies around the world, there are a number of opportunities available both locally and globally. And I believe that this is only set to increase. Technology is not going anywhere. In fact, it is becoming ever more omnipresent and highly skilled experts are always in demand. So a career in these industries would offer a wealth of opportunities and you would have many options to create the career path you want in the STEM field. Thank you. Thanks, Rika. How about Ms. Jody? Do you have any message to our next generation? Thanks, Simon. Uh, I absolutely agree with uh, Rika and Imogen. Um, maybe just to add to this, um, I think a career in STEM can be hugely rewarding for many different reasons. Um, you can work anywhere in the world. Um, I've worked in the UK, uh, I've worked in South Africa, um, in Singapore and now in Germany. So already just being in my early career, I've been to see many different parts of the world. Um, and you can also develop lots of different skills, both technical and soft skills, and technology is always developing and evolving, so there's always new things to learn, new problems to solve. And you can actually uh, develop skills that are easily transferable to different sectors as well. So if you find yourself, say, working in civil engineering, but you, you're quite interested in aerospace as well, you can develop skills in one area and bring them into the other. Um, and yeah, so it, it's very easy to kind of move around. Uh, there's many opportunities, but ultimately you can help change the world for the better. And I think that's the main reason to go into a STEM career. So last but not the least, maybe Timothy can give us some advice. Timothy, please. Yeah, I think uh, from, uh, from my, uh, to me, I think uh, next generation may need to learn or even a reminder for myself that uh, we need to learn to be uh, failure, like uh, accept the failure. Uh, like uh, in the STEM area, especially for scientific research, we will always uh, have uh, try and error. Uh, most of the time, error will be more. So uh, for us, uh, we just need to be persistent, uh, uh, just keep going. And uh, once we encounter any problem, we just seek help. Like we can ask a senior supervisor and friends and fellows. Uh, so I think it, 
we, in general, I would just say that we need to be prepared that there will be lots of failure in front of us. But uh, once we are determined, uh, we are um, motivated by uh, the field or what we have been doing, then we can overcome those problems. Thanks a lot, Timothy and everyone who have give us, uh, given us very good advices. I understand now it's the Q&A session. So maybe we will start uh, from question from the floor. Any questions, please? Thank you for your presentation. I'm Jackie from VTC. Well, I'm just curious. Uh, both Joanna and Emergence have worked in um, um, prison working environment. So my question is, have you ever hesitated when you work in this field? Thank you. Thanks for your question. Uh, I think I'll, be go I'll answer the question first. Uh, personally, I have not really hesitated before joining the marine time field because uh, while I was studying mechanical engineering in the VTC, Already, I'm the only girl in my class, which is 1 to 29. So uh, when I'm on the ship, I'm 1 to 20 to 24 guys. So it's actually the ratio is even better. So, so uh, I, I didn't really hesitate. But uh, I do agree that uh, there are very less women in the STEM field, not only in my field, but generally in STEM. So, uh, but I think about uh, women in STEM, of course, there are some difficulties. You will, most of the time, you'll be the underdog in the beginning. People will look down on you thinking, okay, in my, uh, particularly in my field, uh, you are physically unfit. Uh, on ship, even worse, uh, the guys are pretty much uh, very superstitious. They will say, oh, women on board, then the ship will sink, or there will be bad weather. They are all sort of like uh, you, you are all the audience may be laughing now, but uh, for me, that time hearing that is not so much fun. But um, I do think that after some time when people see your work, your ability to work, then they change their mind. Then they don't really treat you a man or a woman. They really treat you just as a colleague. So I guess the work ability and your attitude, uh, how you are learning or how you're working is more important. And uh, especially in my field, working on a ship is more of uh, working in a team. So uh, always we are working in a team, so just uh, be, have a good communication skill, try to communicate with others, then I think others will also try to help you back. That's my answer. How about Imogen? Yeah, Joanna, I think I agree with you. I think it's natural to, to hesitate. It shouldn't stop you from doing anything. And I'll acknowledge that it's not easy and comfortable if you go to site and you're maybe out of your comfort zone and you're looking around and you're seeing kind of a group of maybe very experienced male engineers. I think to, to really follow on from Joanna, if you work hard, if you contribute to the team, if you have the right mentality and you're not afraid to ask if you don't know or you want to challenge something because you're thinking in a different way, and I think actually that's an asset to the team and the, the whole team would respect you more and I think that would lead to you being a lot more comfortable in a variety of kind of different situations. So, yeah. Thank you. So we can have next question, please. Thank you for sharing. My name is Marco, a student of VTC from Hong Kong. I would like to know what is the most challenging thing you faced throughout your life of STEM? Thank you. Thanks for your question. Uh, I guess this question, we can have Timothy, who is doing a lot of experiment. Maybe he can answer for us. Timothy, please. Yeah, I think uh, for the uh, first one, uh, the first point I want to comment that as a Hong Konger, actually, uh, before I um, go overseas, uh, actually, I will comment that my English is not very good. So the first failure I always face is my language problem. So I need to communicate with other people. Well, I need to uh, catch up with the language, especially in STEM. I know that there are a lot of terminology that we need to spell uh, correctly, uh, pronounce correctly. So first thing, I think it's just to engage that we need to be determined to improve uh, on our own. And secondly, for experiment-wise, uh, apparently, as I always mentioned, we always fail. So even, uh, for example, if we want to amplify a DNA, somehow it will fail uh, for no reason. Uh, we still can't understand. But what I learned so far is that you just need to be persistent. You just need to keep doing the same things, but with some modification. 
if we keep doing the same thing again and again, apparently every, the result will be the same. So we need to learn from senior, learn from others, and particularly in my field, I need to read a lot of papers, uh, other publications to learn from others how they do. So uh, in general, I, I would uh, comment on these two. Thank you, Timothy. Maybe this question we can have Ms. Reka also help us to answer our audience. Reka, please. Uh, yes, thank you, Joanna. Uh, could you just quickly repeat the question? I'm not sure I heard it correctly. Uh, I guess the question is, uh, what is the, what, any failure you have uh, experienced in your work uh, of STEM in your, in, in your life? Ah, yes, thank you. Um, so, yes, I've certainly had uh, many plunders in my career, but one event in particular comes to mind. So, what happened is I was investigating a recurring problem with some of our network devices in a previous job, and I ran a debug command. An unfortunate chain of events occurred, and I accidentally took down half of our data center. So we reacted to the situation very quickly and were able to contain the situation and minimize the damages for the most part. But that day I learned a lesson to plan things more carefully and analyze the possible outcomes beforehand and verify the steps and going over the process with my team before implementing anything. And this is actually a perfect demonstration of the importance of communication, which we have discussed throughout this session. Thank you for the question. Thank you, Reka. So now I understand we have some questions from the webinar. So, uh, so here's the question on the screen. Uh, have you ha ever felt hesitate about leaving home for your career? So I guess uh, for myself, I have, yeah, I do have a bit of hesitation leaving home for six to eight months. But uh, in the beginning of my work, actually, I don't really hesitate. But because being a very young person, tw early 20s, you just want to go out and explore. And that time you might be fighting a lot with your parents. So it's a very good chance to just get out of home. But yeah, obviously nowadays I treasure because you're leaving home for so long, so you kind of more hesitate because you really treasure your family and friends more nowadays. <laughs> so I guess uh, Jody also working uh, away from home. Maybe Jody can share a bit your experience with us. Yeah, for me, um, I've never really hesitated. If a great opportunity has been there, um, I've just thrown myself into it. Um, because in my opinion, if you, if you find yourself in a situation that actually you don't like, then you can just change it. Um, so taking this risk and going on to experience new things can be a great development opportunity. Um, sometimes it's not easy. You can get homesick for sure. Um, so it's, all, it's always important to have something planned, some trips home and to regularly speak with family. Um, but it, it's an adventure. Your career is an adventure. Um, so I, I, I wouldn't hesitate at all to, to move around in my career. I, I find it exciting. Yeah, I think I agree with Jody. Just don't stop trying. Just try first. So I guess that answered the question of the audience from the webinar. So I understand we have another question. From the, so out of all your works and projects, which one do you feel most proud of? Uh, maybe uh, Imogen can uh, talk a bit about it for us. Imogen, please. Sure. Um, I guess in, in fear of some repetition, I'm probably most proud of the projects that I'm working on now. Um, because not only are they um, interesting and rewarding in terms of like self-development, so I'm in lear learning incredible amounts, both kind of technically and commercially. It's that link to the kind of um, social responsibility aspect. So the fact that I genuinely believe the projects I'm working on will have a positive impact to the kind of environment in the UK, and hopefully moving forwards globally. So I think for, for me, that's the, the most kind of proud moment of my career today. Thanks a lot, Imogen. Uh, I think, thank you all your questions uh, from, the, from the audience and uh, answers from all our graduates. I hope uh, all the answers can make us understand, make you all understand more and have an insight more on STEM. 
and uh, the career after that. So it sounds like uh, after graduation uh, from STEM, all our graduates have a lot of good uh, uh, job opportunities, uh, very vast opportunities in uh, different fields and different countries because every country is requiring different talents. And, uh, so, and there's a very high demand in different STEM field uh, people. So uh, I guess, so that's why we need to have the skills of what we have uh, talked about earlier. You need to have good communication skills. We need to be flexible, adaptive, so to get on to the future and to have a good future in STEM. So I think, so I think today I'll, I'll share my, our experience. It's very inspiring for the students or the, the audience. Thanks to all the graduates, thanks to all the graduates speakers and, uh, and, the, and the audience for joining us on this platform. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Joanna, Damon, and the panelists for your insightful sharing.